Yeah, this is the episode where it just goes all off the rails. Rossi Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to another episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't I do Pakistan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. I don't know. Grassi, and today we are going to be attempting to rank the top 10 teams heading into week six of the NFL season. And yeah, every week, it really started around week three. I was like, okay, things are going to start, you know, evening out a little bit. We're going to start to see who's good, who's bad. And every week since, it has been pure pandemonium. Massive upsets this week. And we got to do some honorable mentions here. You got to shout out the New York Giants. That's right. You got the New York back. Defeating the Seattle Seahawks. Defensive line looking amazing. Daniel Jones is playing well. And they didn't even have Malik neighbors. So you got to give them some props there for knocking off the Seahawks. You got to give some props to the Arizona Cardinals for knocking off the 49ers. Kyler Murray just... Taking off running. Also got that Call of Duty sponsorship, which honestly, don't let your memes be dreams. And there's two other teams I'd like to shout out as well. And one is the Chicago Bears. You ain't in the top 10 yet because it is just the Panthers. But Caleb Williams probably had his best NFL game yet. That defense is looking good. Their run game is really starting to support their rookie quarterback. And things are looking up. Great. And of course, got to shout out the Green Bay Mother Loving Packers because they were able to defeat the LA Rams. Of course, not having Jair Alexander or Romeo Dobbs or Christian Watson, but the Rams are a beat up football team as well. And while it did get a little bit close at the end, got to give some props to Xavier McKinney and the Green Bay Packers. And who knows, maybe before long, we're going to have the entire NFC North division on this thing. And so starting off with number 10, there's some newcomers on this list. You got the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys, they earned enough to get into the top 10 after defeating the Pittsburgh Steelers at near 1 o'clock in the morning on Monday morning. And that game was ugly. The Cowboys did not have Micah Parsons. Again, their run game, Doddle, did have a nice second half. But this came off the back of Dak Prescott. And it's amazing because Dak Prescott did not play his best game. Though he did throw for over 300 yards on a good Steelers defense, he also threw multiple interceptions on separate days because that was a thing. But he also was responsible for the game-winning touchdown to Jalen Tolbert, who won the game. But at what cost? That was close. I think I've broken something. That man sprained his balls, apparently. Taking a look at the Cowboys right now, there's definitely some holes on this squad. But you look at the bottom half of the top 10 right now, and I think you could say the same for just about every single other team. Whether it's a team dealing with a ton of injuries right now or just not playing consistently, what the Cowboys were able to do to go on the road to beat a good Steelers football team because Steelers usually BS their way to victory. And even though Dak struggled throughout the evening, was able to put up the stat totals and throw that game-winning touchdown, it's impressive enough for me that they are able to make it to number 10. But let's see if they can continue. And plus, they're not even the highest NFC East team on this thing. Number nine. We are truly at the end times. You got the Denver Broncos. Oh, when was the last time the Denver Broncos were on the top 10 power rankings? You're welcome, Brandon Perna. It's a consolation prize since the curse wheel was defeated on Monday night. But the Broncos, don't look. But they have won three games in a row. And not only was it the Broncos' first time beating the Vegas Raiders, but this was the first time in eight games that they were able to finally beat the Raiders in general. And taking a look at this game, this offense definitely still has some flaws, but Bo Nix was playing pretty damn good football. So I guess you could say Bo's Christian worship pregame playlist is finally paying off. A blessing. A blessing from the Lord. God be praised. But one of the big reasons why the Broncos are so successful these last three games is their defense. Their defense has been playing lights out. Their secondary is phenomenal. PS2, Patrick Sertan had a 100-yard pick six. And if this defense can continue to play like this and the offense can just catch up, watch out. The Broncos are going to be a very solid football team. And so because of their three-game win streak, because of defeating the streak of the Raiders just kicking their ass, I got to give some props to the Denver Broncos and they find themselves at number nine. Number eight, 
You got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Not going to be too harsh on the Buccaneers here as they lost a close one with the Falcons on Thursday night. However, they'll have their chance for revenge in a couple of weeks. This is not goodbye. I'll get you next time, Gadget. I'll get you. But the Buccaneers are definitely missing some pieces on defense. And while Vita Vea was there, they are desperately missing Antoine Winfield Jr. And he cannot come back soon enough. And for the Buccaneers, Baker Mayfield had an excellent night. That offense was humming along. Their defense, though, completely out the window. And considering it took 509 yards from Kirk Cousins to be able to defeat the Buccaneers on Thursday night, I gotta give them lots of props. And I imagine that they're going to get healthier as the season goes along. The other positive thing is that they finally established a run game at 160 yards rushing. You had Rashad White and Bucky Irving carrying the rock. And if they can get a more balanced offense to take some of the pressure off Baker Mayfield, who again, is playing really well, this could be a more balanced football team. Pair that with getting healthy on defense. I still think the Buccaneers are going to be contending for the NFC South title. But on Thursday night, the Falcons were just the better team. And plus that lack of face mask also helped. Number seven, How high can they climb? You got the Washington Commanders. That's right, Wildflower. You're moving on up the power rankings. I don't know what's going on, but I like it. And this game, quite honestly, felt like it was over from the start. I guarantee you're going to die if you touch me, and there's no afterlife. Everything just goes black. Don't do it. The Commanders dominated the Cleveland Browns, and the Commanders, who do not have a great defense, were able to contain whatever the hell Deshaun Watson was attempting to do. But it's the offense. And Jaden Daniels, who's been phenomenal over these past few weeks, he did not play his best game. However, was still the Commanders' leading rusher. And we've been talking about the rushing attack of the Commanders, and that's been really good to support Jaden Daniels in his rookie year. And still, against a very good defense, because Cleveland, even though their offense is non-existent, they still got a great defense, was able to score plenty of points and keep up that momentum getting another win. And right now, the Commanders are sitting atop the NFC East and the rest of the division ain't doing anything special right now. The Eagles were on a bye. The Cowboys and Giants were able to sneak away with a win. And the Commanders, who knew heading into week six would look like the best team in their division. And quite honestly, I don't know how long it's going to last, but I'm just going to enjoy every second of it. And honestly... I'm just happy for Wildflower. Number six, you got the Atlanta Falcons. Well, if there was any doubt, Kirk is the captain. I got it, Kirk! I got it, Kirk! 509 yards from Kirk Cousins in an outstanding evening that, honestly, it was just an awesome game between the Buccaneers and the Falcons. And the Falcons, they had that big win over the Eagles a couple weeks ago, and you're like, okay, can they replicate this? There were still some questions about the Falcons. I still think that there are, especially on defense. However... The offense was humming along, Kirk Cousins tearing it up, and this is why you brought in Kirk Cousins. Now, of course, they could have drafted somebody on defense to make that defense a little bit better, but that's neither here nor there. The Falcons deserve all the praise right now, and they're a pretty exciting team to watch. We know there's a litany of talent on the offensive side of the ball, and Kirk Cousins, and connecting with Drake London, is finally starting to bring that talent out of the offense. I'm curious to see how long they're going to be able to sustain this, and I'm curious to see how they're going to match up against some tougher teams. But right now, the Falcons, They are flying high at number six. Number five, you got the Detroit Lions, who, bro, they were on a bye week and every other team in the division won. Worst bye week ever. This is why we can't have nice things, Barry. But the Lions are still on these power rankings because one, it gives them another week to get healthier, which they needed to do. But two, the Lions have been playing some pretty damn good football. Now they did beat the Seattle Seahawks a couple weeks ago and the Seahawks just lost to the Giants. So we'll wait to see there. However, looking at the Lions, they got some important games coming up. They got the Cowboys this week, which will be a very interesting revenge game. And then they're going to be going up against the undefeated Minnesota Vikings. So the Lions, they got some tough and important games coming up but right now got the bye week to get healthy and we'll see what they look like against the Cowboys next week number four you got the Strouds the Houston Texans defeating the Buffalo Bills and listen the Bills they shot themselves in the foot However, I got to give props to C.J. Stroud and the Houston Texans, Stephon Diggs being the leading receiver in that game. And while the Bills definitely made plenty of mistakes and gave the ball back to the Texans, they were able to get in position for that game-winning field goal. And yeah, 
Right now, the Texans looking pretty good. Josh Allen did not have a good day, only completing nine out of his 30 passes. The defense of the Texans really stepping up. And for the Strouds right now, everything is going according to plan. Nobody panics when things go according to plan even if the plan is horrifying. I do still have some concerns about the Texans. However, when Joe Mixon eventually comes back, if he can replicate what he did week one, the run game should be much, much better. And it gives CJ Stroud a little bit of a break and a little bit more of a balanced offense. And so right now, the Strouds are sitting pretty at number four. Number three, you got the Baltimore Ravens. Whew, what a game. Nine touchdowns between Burrow and Lamar Jackson. The script writer was cooking this week. I was a true artist. It was an absolutely phenomenal game, and I got to give a lot of credit to the Ravens here. And honestly, the Bengals would be an honorable mention. Unfortunately, they just haven't won enough games. So while they looked really good, they fell short. And we're getting to a point in the season where they can't afford to do so because they've lost so many to start the season. However, we're talking about the Ravens right now. The Ravens, Lamar Jackson. Do I need to say anything else? The stiff arm touchdown, making the plate. It's a fumble, doesn't matter. Still going to throw a touchdown. Absolutely incredible. And we were talking about this on GPS with Perna, but a balanced offense here with a good run game with Derrick Henry and eventually when Keaton Mitchell comes back and Justice Hill is very good, plus Lamar Jackson being able to do whatever the hell he wants, this could be a scary Ravens team. And yes, the defense gave up plenty of points and plenty of yards to Joe Burrow. However, they intercepted him when it was a pivotal point of this game, being able to come back and eventually win this game. And while it could be very easy to sit here and say the Bengals could have won that game, which they could have many times, Ultimately, the Ravens were able to go on the road, get a big division win, and are currently sitting at number one in the AFC North. And so because of that, Ravens, you're at number three. Number two, there's a change. You got the purple incarnation of Satan. You got the Minnesota Vikings. Last week, I put you at number one. And now the Chiefs, and the Vikings are the only undefeated teams in the NFL. And so now it's going to be a constant weekly battle to see who can look better. And this week, the Vikings were able to go to jolly old London. And apparently they got Robert Sala fired. But able to defeat Aaron Rodgers and the New Jersey Jets. Aaron Rodgers had himself a rough game. A very rare pick six for Mr. Rodgers. And the Vikings defense really stood out and made Aaron Rodgers have a tough, tough day. Meanwhile, the offense, nothing too exciting. The ground game wasn't that impressive going up against a good defense. And Sam Darnold probably had his worst game of the season. And yet they were still able to win. I know a lot of it was screw it. Justin Jefferson is down there somewhere, which honestly... It's a good game plan. And the most important thing is that the Vikings got the win, right? They're still 5-0. and However, the way that they won was not as impressive as the Chiefs, and we're just splitting hairs here. It doesn't mean that the Vikings are a significantly worse team. It just means going up against this opponent, they did not look as good as the Chiefs did against another good defense in the Saints. And so because of that, the Vikings are sitting at number two, and yet some people still think the Vikings are frauds. I don't know why you keep doubting me but keep doubting me. I don't think that, I just hope it. And number one, you got the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs, they did it. They broke Brandon Perna's curse wheel. Thank you all. Your love has broken the curse and freed my soul. I'll never have to kill again. Really? Nah. Or did they? But the Chiefs put on a dominant performance against the Saints last night. And the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, didn't even have a single passing touchdown. He had an interception. However, 28 for 39, threw for over 330 yards on a good Saints defense. However, the reason why the Chiefs are at number one is because they dominated possession in this game. They had a good run game. Kareem Hunt had over 100 yards and a touchdown. But it was the time of possession. They nearly doubled the time of possession that the Saints had of nearly 40 minutes to 20 minutes. And so that is an impressive win against a Saints team that, yes, has struggled these past few weeks. However, they can be explosive on offense. You saw that play to Shahid. Alvin Kamara is always a threat. But good God, the Chiefs defense absolutely smothering any ground attempt whatsoever. 11 carries for 26 yards is what Kamara's stat line was. Derek Carr throwing an interception, even though he was just trying to get it out of bounds. But a nice play by the 
defender. And the Chiefs, a big win at home, continuing their undefeated streak. And I know they had the advantage of playing at Arrowhead, but it was the way they won this game against a, what was an explosive offense in the Saints. And I think that was truly impressive. They beat the curse wheel, and they deserve the number one spot this week. So yeah, welcome back, Chiefs. And so to recap here, at number one, you got the Chiefs, two, the Vikings, three, Ravens, four, Texans, five, Lions, six, Falcons, seven, Commanders, eight, Buccaneers, nine, Broncos, and 10, Cowboys. But let me know what you think down in the comments below, who should be on this list, who should be off it, heading into week six. Let me know. You guys saw me at TomGrassyComedy.com or Tom Grassy Comedy, all social media, see down below. A big shout and thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go Pack Go.